There's just something about these uh, Coleco uh, VFD uh, gaming consoles that people really have great feelings for. I know I do. I bought one, and then I bought a couple of more, and they're 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 great fun. They they're simple, but there's something about them. Maybe it's the design, the controls, but it's got me hooked. And as you can see, I might have one or two of them. Some that uh, are not Coleco, obviously. Some are from Excalibur, some from Tommy Electronics, uh, even Parker Brothers. Um, but they're just really neat. And then um, people started saying to themselves, especially on uh, this great uh, forum on Facebook called Old Made New by uh, Neil Henry, he's taken it to another level. There's other people doing it too, but he does some really nice work. He's actually taken these old ones, some are broken or just not working right. He fixes them or he puts a Raspberry Pi in there and he turns them into what we always wanted to as kids. Uh, real arcade machines playing in these and they're phenomenal. They're actually works of art in my opinion. They're just absolutely phenomenal uh, devices. Um, he's even made ones that never existed before like the Robotron or the Tempest and the, the craftsmanship he puts in here is really really amazing. So we went from VFDs, very simple games, to now being able to play the real games uh, on these and it's absolutely amazing. But people started to say well you know that's really neat, but could we ever go back and maybe play the VFD games on these new modern systems? And with a program like MAME, you can. Uh, ever since MAME uh, point, uh, 176, they actually emulate uh, the original Clecos and other VFD games. It's kind of neat. Um, so the question was, could we put them on the Raspberry Pi? So here we have the uh, Neil Henry's Robotron. I believe he's got a Pi 3 in here. But you can see he's running the emulated uh, Coleco VFD Frogger. So let's now get into how we can do this on our, our Pi Zero, One, Two, or Three. Uh, this nifty little version of a main build that was brought to my attention and Neil's attention by uh, George McMullen. Very nice guy. Was very helpful. And apparently, uh, I hope I pronounce it right. Chucky, no Chucky Hobnob uh, is a gentleman who actually made the binary. Chucky Hobnob. Um, so kudos out to him actually making this main build that we're able to use and uh, play these old VFDs on modern consoles to emulate the old VFDs. It's a paradox, I know. But let's get into it. In order to install these Coleco uh, emulated uh, tabletops and some other uh, VFD video games into your uh, Pi uh, 2 or Pi 3, now it may actually work on the Pi 0. I haven't tested it yet. Initially it was, it was quite slow in the 2. Uh, but in changing some settings, it sped up quite a bit. So after this video, I am actually going to try this in my uh, my Pi Zero as well. But in order to get these running, you do have to have RetroPie version 4.1 or later. An earlier version, uh, you can try it. I don't know if it's going to work, but it's recommended to be running RetroPie version 4.1 or later. Uh, also, I'm not super fluent anymore in, in Unix or in the, actually in the Pi itself. I'm kind of learning a lot as I go. Um, so my baby steps here maybe will be uh, easier for some of you to follow. If not, uh, please don't judge me. <laughs> I'm still new with this. So um, you do have to make sure any one of your pies has to be uh, on the internet uh, because most of the, the information here I'm going to be downloading uh, through uh, the pie through SSH. And to connect uh, to the SSH, I actually use PuTTY. So let's connect to my pie right now. into the Pi. And again, all this information I'll have down below so you'll be able to uh, follow along if you want to print it out if you wish. Okay, so once we're logged in, we need to change to uh, a different directory. And again, there's probably a quicker way of doing this. But again, I'm still learning some of these commands all over again and uh, it might be easier to follow. So the first thing we're going to do is change to the RetroPie setup directory. And then we have to go into the scripts modules directory. And then finally into the emulators uh, directory. Okay, now once we're here, we're gonna pull a script down from the internet. And again, all these commands will be down below, so you don't have to uh, pay too, too much attention right now. I'm just going through the steps. So this will actually download the script from the internet. And you can see it's very quick. So I got the uh, the file down and it's all set. 
Next thing we have to do is actually go into a setup file on the Raspberry uh, itself, and that's what this command is going to do here. I mean, you could probably do it through the GUI, but I just found this command, and it was a little bit quicker to uh, just get right into it. So what this is going to let us do is now install this particular module emulator uh, into it. Now, I'm, I was told by um, uh, some people that uh, by doing this, you, if you have MAME installed already, like if you're doing this on a, on, a, on a Pi build that already has emulators in it like MAME, this will add another MAME into it. Uh, there's apparently no way around that just yet. I guess they're trying to find ways that doesn't happen. But for right now, if you have MAME in here, like MAME for All or other MAMEs installed, this will install yet another MAME for these uh, VFDs. So the first thing we're going to do is just hit OK here just to get past this startup screen. Now the first thing we're going to do is go to P, which is Manage Packages, which is right here. P, Manage Packages. Now I was told you can uh, use the optional packages, but uh, my original uh, information I got was to uh, use the Manage Experimental Packages, and that's what I did. So you might want, you can try the Manage Optional Packages, but my steps, I'm going to Manage Experimental Packages. Now once you go through here, you're going to see a bunch of different things. We're looking for this one right here, which is the MAME uh, 017B-R capital PI. And this is the, uh, the emulator we're going to install right now that will play these VFDs. And then now just click on the install from binary. And this will take a little bit. It's actually going through a process of installing it into your Raspberry Pi uh, build. And this is really the last step. Pretty much after this, we can uh, go through File Manager and install the, the ROMs. Now, the ROMs I have here for the Clico VFDs are from a MAME, uh, was it MAME uh, .180 build. My understanding is um, anything after uh, the point, uh, .176 will probably, be, probably work. But um, since uh, 1.80 is the latest version of MAME, those are the ROMs you probably want to uh, grab. Now MAME itself, again, has supported these Coleco VFDs uh, emulated since uh, build 0.176. But now they're actually on 0.181. Uh, but, you know, they're always changing. But definitely the uh, 0 0.180 uh, ROMs for these Colecos, uh will definitely work. See on the on the secondary screen there, it's a clean build. It has just the actual RetroPie program itself. There are no uh, nothing else installed other than what you get with the initial 4.1 build. And again, uh, you don't usually see the other emulators until you start putting ROMs into their respective folders. Okay, so once that's all done, we can just exit out of here. So let's go to back and that's why I have command of the keyboard there there we go okay we exited out now that we've done that all we need to do now is copy the uh, ROMs into the folder it created so let's open up my computer here and we have to go to in this case see here 192.168.0.101 is my Raspberry Pi 2 and now we're logged in uh, to the folder structure and there's a folder called ROMs and inside here we need to find the uh, main we just installed which is right here open that up and you can see all these, these different folders we're going to copy a bunch of ROMs into that directory Again, all these are from MAME version uh, 0 0.180, but apparently anything over uh, 0.176 should work. So once they're all inside there, all they need to do now is just reboot my Raspberry Pi, and we should see the emulator appear on the lower screen.
Now what I'll do is, again, you do need to make some small changes in here to make it run better, but I'll play one uh, without any modifications on a Raspberry Pi 2. And you can see the, uh, the speed issues it has. But once you make a couple of small changes, it makes a huge difference. So you can see we now see MAME now listed with uh, 27 available games. And uh, I'm going to go to Frogger first because this plays music first. You can kind of uh, get an idea of the speed issues it has initially. So let's go into that. Now this is where we'll go to make some changes later. But we're not going to make them right now. Now right now, I'm trying to even get it to start playing its sound and it's lagging so much it hasn't even begun to play any of its sounds yet. So it's very, very laggy right now. So I'm going to escape out because I can't even get it to... Usually it'll play a couple of tunes but very slowly. There it goes. It finally, it finally loaded up. You can see it's not even playing its audio right now. But actually the speed right now is not too, too bad. But it's not playing the audio. So let's see if we can fix all that. So okay, go back you out. see the VFD version of MAME. I have about 27 games installed. Now when you go to pick your game, in this case I'm going to pick the Coleco uh, Frogger. When you select that, you'll see very quickly this little screen here saying press any button to configure. Um, what you need to do is, like on my particular unit, the arrow keys are up, down, left, and right on my controller. I have control, alt selected, and number one and number five. But I don't have, let's say, my space bar configured already. So I just hit my space bar on this, and it brings you to this screen here. And these are the uh, two changes we need to make here, at least I had to make it on my Raspberry Pis connected with an HDMI. Um, it seems that it may not be the case if you're using an SPI display with a lower resolution. I'll get into that a little bit later. But with the regular HDMI out, first thing I had to do was come into here and I selected option 5 to select a video mode uh, for my Pi. Now you can probably do the default one to set up for all the games, but I, I'm testing this right now so I set it just for the particular game. So I clicked on number 5. And I selected uh, the very first option here, the uh, CEA-1 640 by 480 at 60 hertz. And I clicked OK on this one. Then I went down to select the frame buffer res. Again, you can set it default for everything, but I'm testing it just for this particular game. So I picked option 11, clicked OK. And I selected option 2 for 640 by 480. I probably could have picked a 320 by 240, but I selected number 2. And then I went down to launch. Once you do that, it'll take you right into the game. So I know this is uh, my setup here is not the greatest. I hope you are able to hear the audio, but uh, the game is now running at proper speed, so I'm going to start playing it. Oop, but it's nice if I don't get killed. Let's try that again. So you can see he's running, he's running fine. So I'm going to go out of here for a second. And I'm going to go into Donkey Kong. And again, all these were running very, very slow, almost impossible on a 2 anyway, uh, with the default setting to set up as. But making a small change will make these things extremely playable. And it gives me hope that I can actually get it running on my Pi Zero. So I'm going to go in here to Donkey Kong. Again, go into the configuration. Now I know you can set this up so all of them do this. But I just want to drive this one home to you guys. Uh, and do each one individually right now. So I go into, again, the video mode. And I'm going to lock it into the first one, 640 by 480. And I'm going to go to the frame buffer as, get, uh, as well. And set that to 640 by 480 as well. And then launch the ROM. And let's start it up. And again, I'm not sure if you can hear the sound on the speakers I have here, but the sound is perfectly fine. And the speed of... Uh, Jumpman is fine as well. Oh, ooh. Now this next level I suck at, so expect me to die. <laughs> All 
I can get up there. Nope. Let's go out of here again and take a look at another game. Going to go. Oh, let's go up to Galaxian. And again, hit spacebar and make our changes. And then launch the game. Now, once you make those changes, it does save them, so you don't have to keep doing it each time you go into the game. And this one says there's problems with the sound emulation, but it sounds fine to me. Again, I'm not sure if the audio is coming through yet to you guys, but the sound sounds fine to me. And you can see, I'm like, oh, on the Pi 2, speed is absolutely fine now. And I have a funny feeling when I test it on my Pi Zero that it will also work okay. And again, this is not um, uh, like re-imaged version of the game. It's actually emulated. Uh, they've actually recreated the hardware in MAME. So it's pretty impressive, and it looks really nice on these LCD screens, that's for sure. Okay, let's take a look at another game. We'll cut, we got to do a Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man, so let's launch that. Hit the space bar, make our changes. That was me, hit the wrong key on the keyboard. But the sound sounds fine, the speed sounds fine. Let's take a look at another game. We'll do Miss Pac-Man. Again, hit the space bar. Okay, let's take a look at another game. If we look down, I see I have a whole bunch of them in here. Actually, I don't know off the top of my head where all of them are, but I do know about Scramble and Tron. So let's take a look at Tron. Hit space bar again, so we can do our configuration. Now, Tron is actually by Tommy uh, Electronics, but it's still a VFD game. And it requires the same little changes here.
Okay, let's take a look at another game. I was never very good at Tron. Great movie for me. I love that show. And uh, we have Scramble, also from Tommy Electronics. Space bar again. Same changes. So we can see that uh, it runs really well, and that's really it. So my next video, I will just see if it'll work on the uh, Raspberry Pi uh, Zero uh, in my little Pac-Man cabinet I've been working on. So I hope this helped you guys out in seeing that it's really not too hard to install, and uh, it's very playable. Um, they did a really nice job, and, and again, a shout out to George McMullen for helping me with the setup instructions, and also a shout out to uh, Chucky Hobnob for actually compiling the main binary. So that's it everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave any comments down below and if you enjoyed the video please like, share, and subscribe. And remember everyone, game on. Okay everyone, uh, a little update uh, at the end of uh, my Pi 2 video about the VFD main. Uh, I have installed it here on my little still incomplete Pac-Man uh, portable main unit. Uh, running RetroPie uh, version 4.1 and I installed the VFD version of MAME and you can't really see it too well because the camera's not getting good light differences but it did install two versions of MAME. I had MAME for All on here which is running the regular MAME uh, games and then I have installed here the MAME with the VFDs so I know you can't really see it too well here but I'm going to go into it and uh, the game right now I'm setting up is Frogger so I'm going to launch Frogger and again, uh, I didn't make any changes to the display on this at all. Now it's initializing, and uh, this screen is still the larger screen. It's not the 2.4 inch, it's 2.8, so it's a little bit bigger. But you can see the scoreboard uh, up at top there, and we'll see if we can get the game started here. Um, it doesn't have a sound card yet either, but you can see there it is, and it is completely playable. So let me see if I can get a little frogger here to go across this, the, uh, the screen. And again, the uh, screen protector is still on here. Haven't taken it off yet. Oh, there we go. Okay, making it up. Get on some turtles. Get on the logs. And there we go. I got a guy across. So um, I haven't made any changes to the settings like I had to do with the Raspberry Pi 2. Um, but I'm not using an external display. I'm using an SPI display. I don't know if that makes any difference at all. Um, but it is playing fine. Uh, the speed seems fine. If it is running a little bit slow, I'm sure I can make some adjustments on here to help with that, but um, it is completely playable. So I'm very happy with that. So uh, it looks like it'll run on um, any current version of the Raspberry Pi, and it's very playable. So that was just a little update to the end. Uh, the install process is exactly the same. You follow the same exact steps I have down in the comments to install this on uh, any of your uh, builds. Now, the uh, build I had done on the Raspberry 2 was a clean, fresh install. It was a brand new download of, of RetroPie 4.1. This one, I already had MAME and stuff on here, and it installed just fine. So if you have a build already, as long as it's RetroPie version 4.1, you have other emulators in there, it should install and work just fine. Again, a big thank you to George McMullen and also Chucky Hobnob for all their help in making this work. And a shout out also to Neil Henry for all the great work he's been doing on the old McNew forum. Everyone remember, game on.